If you like to hurl insults at your enemies, you've a visage fit for letter writing, and perform for the homies, then the Bard class is for you. This class was just added to the Baldur's Gate 3 Early Access with Patch 8 along with playable gnomes, but we're going to talk about the Bard class today. Let's go. If you've been with us on the channel for a while, you know that I've been making these class guides for Baldur's Gate since the game first came out, but I did miss making one for the Barbarian because some game about elderly people and rings came out. I don't know, you might have heard of it, but if you guys would like me to go back and make a Barbarian guide, do let me know in the comments down below. So how to make a Bard in Baldur's Gate 3 Early Access is the Bard is really a versatile class that kind of feels more of a support role than some of the other classes with the abilities to debuff allies and make them prone and just laugh out loud or inspire your allies in combat. This build is leaning into those specific things and we're going to really focus on buffing allies, healing allies and putting debuffs on our enemies. The unique feature of the Bard is the Bardic Inspiration. This is a replenishable resource that you'll get X amount of charges on before you need to replenish them with a long rest. You can use this resource to buff your allies by giving them extra dice rolls on attack rolls, ability checks or saving throws. This can be used in speech checks as well or you can debuff enemies if you go the College of Law subclass with cutting words, which will allow you to apply a D6 penalty to enemies' attack rolls and ability checks. Otherwise, the Bard functions similarly to some kind of spellcaster class. You get level one and level two spells and you use those spells mostly in combat with some flexibility to use some melee attacks with the rapier or the hand crossbow that you do start out with. Let's get into making a Bard. We'll start out with race. Now, the race defines some of the main features for any class and charisma is the primary attribute for a Bard as it's your spellcaster modifier so the best options here are races that give you a plus two to charisma and that's the half elves or the tiefling any of these lines it's up to you which one you want to pick however i prefer to go half elf as the main option here because of some of the racial features but also because you get the additional ability improvements which you can put into dexterity and constitution to give yourself even more ability points when we get into attributes shortly now next is your background and your skills and charisma again is the bard's main attribute so for your background entertainer is probably the best option because you get the the performance and acrobats proficiency performance is a charisma skill and the other options there being deception intimidation and persuasion which you can pick up as your skills so buffing all of your charisma skills here and at a later stage when you level up you do get access to jack of all trades so you will get extra ability checks bonuses for the bard the bard is really good for doing any of these ability checks in combat and out of combat so for your spells and cantrips you will get access to two cantrips to start out with and four spells vicious mockery is the first cantrip you should pick up this will allow you to unleash a string of insults at a creature dealing 1d for psychic damage but also giving them disadvantage on their next attack roll that's the main benefit is that disadvantage true strike as a cantrip is also pretty good to pick up this will allow you to buff your character's defenses by giving your character's advantage on attack rolls for their next turn for spells dissonant whispers is highly useful this will allow you to whisper a discontent melody into the creature it does 3d6 psychic damage which is heaps for a level one spell and becomes frightened tasha's hit laughter you should also pick up this will allow you to inflict the creature with fits of rage leaving them prone without the ability to get up now this spell is highly effective and better to use rather than sleep because you can actually attack enemies while they're prone and stuck in the hideous laughter whereas when you attack an enemy that's been slept they will wake up so this is much better to use in those scenarios so you can knock down enemies and then just wail on them i'd also recommend to pick up cure wounds and healing word both of these spells just regain characters hit points because we're focusing on that support line so you can then heal your allies there there are plenty of other spells that you can pick up but we're kind of going here with a mix of damaging and condition applying spells that fit with the style of play that we're focusing on here you'll also pick a starting instrument on the class screen as well but the instrument can be changed later like if you find one out in the game you can actually just equip it and it doesn't affect any gameplay things just the sound that your spells make for your ability points charisma is our main ability point and you should absolutely max that out it should be starting at 16 you can copy the stats that i've got here with dexterity at 16 because we are going to be wearing light armor or in this case i'm actually going to recommend that you wear robes and i'll tell you why shortly but we want to have as much dexterity as possible for your initiative as well as your armor class and then constitution to maximize your hit points as well as any constitution saving throws for any concentration spells that we do have when you're leveling up as the bard at level two you will get song of rest 
which is essentially just a free short rest. You can use this to just sing some songs to your allies and it will actually heal them as if you have short rested. You also get a couple of level one spells and you can really take whatever you want here. I took Cure Wounds as I didn't take it during my original character creation, but you can really pick anything that sounds good to you. At level three, this is the main decision you'll make. This is your subclass and here you can pick any skills that you like that you want to be proficient in, but the main thing here is the subclass. You'll get either the College of Law or the College of Valor. The College of Law will change your playstyle to be more of a melee focused bard with proficiencies in medium armor, shields, and martial weapons. You also get the Combat Inspiration, which is a variation on Bardic Inspiration, and College of Law is the other alternative which gives you the Cutting Words reaction, which Cutting Words will then allow you to debuff enemies like we talked about a little bit earlier, and we can pick that up as a reaction, which will mean that you can use a bonus action, an action, and a reaction in the same turn. We're going to go the College of Law here for this build, however, if you're looking to make a College of Valor build, I would be putting more points into Strength than I have in this build, probably switch Dexterity to maybe 10 or 12 and put a bunch of points into Strength and then make like a Strength and Charisma hybrid with using those melee weapons and shields is what I would be doing there. You also get access to level 2 spell variants of your existing spells, plus you get to pick a new one. I'd pick up Phantasmal Force here, it does 1d6 Psychic damage and will continue to deal damage to the target as they are affected by different types of damage throughout the next couple of turns. It's a decent concentration spell to pick up. At level 4, you'll get access to another cantrip. You can just pick whatever you like here. Mage Hands is a good option if you haven't picked that up yet already. Another level 2 spell. I took Heat Metal here for some extra damage options, but that is up to you. The main thing here is the Feet option, and for Feats, it's really just Ability Improvement is the best to go in the early access. This will allow you to get your Charisma to 18, giving you an additional point for all of your Charisma checks and spell casting and all of that good stuff, so absolutely pick that up. There isn't really a whole lot of equipment for the barn at the moment, or that has been found actually, to be honest, because who knows where, where anything is in this game, but the one thing you should pick up is the cap of curing in the druid cove at the top of the druid cove you can pick this up which will every time you do a bardic inspiration you will also heal the target so it's actually super valuable otherwise you can just wear whatever armor and weapons that you feel like i have gone with robes so i've dropped the light armor and put robes on and then have gale cast mage armor on me as that gives me 16 armor class whereas if i was just wearing light armor i only have 14 but that's entirely up to you some tips for playing the bard is your bard should be your main talker in combat you have a huge amount of charisma plus heaps of speech checks and performance checks and bard specific checks that you can actually do with the bard as well there is also new speech checks that are specific to the bard so absolutely have them as your main talker in combat if you're looking to just deal like reliable range damage the hand crossbow is actually more reliable than using vicious mockery if you're just focusing on damage but if you're looking to apply negative effects to the enemies then use the mockery skill focus on applying those conditions to the biggest threat in the combat encounter say if there's you know the main troll or whatever it may be focus Focus on that as debuffing them and then inspiring your allies. Like I often aspire Lazeal as she's really deadly in melee range and she's probably my primary damage dealer for this play. You can also use your rapier to fight in melee range if you do want to, if you're like out of spell slots or out of options. With the 16 armor class from the mage armor, you can take a couple of hits. So don't be afraid to use your rapier in those scenarios where you are in close range. You just need to deal a little bit of damage but don't want to waste a spell slot. I apologize if some of the footage in this video is a little bit repetitive as I have cooked my save file. I've got that long rest bug where every time you long rest the game just crashes and I can't seem to fix it but that's the joy of playing in early access but thank you guys for watching this video till the end thank you to our members for supporting the channel my name is Norza and I hope you have a great day